Hi, this is Paula Martin with the Paula Martin Group at Keller Williams, and I'm here today with Rich Berry from Pride Rock Mortgage, and we thought with everything that's going on in the mortgage world right now and with interest rates that it might be really good to ask a professional, an expert in the field, what his thoughts were. So Rich, when yes. we heard that um, interest rates you know, bumped up 0.75, um, what, what does that really mean for us? Well, uh, that's the Fed raising the Fed funds lending rate. And what they're doing is they're raising the rate that they're lending to lending institutions. And that the effect of that is they want the rates of all lending to increase throughout the economy. And the reason they do that is to control inflation. It's a tool to control inflation. How does that really affect the mortgage rate? Because the 0.75 doesn't di directly relate to what the new mortgage rate's gonna be, right? right. Yep. What happens is, um, when they raise, say, three quarters of a point, they're gonna tell you in advance that we're gonna be raising, and they have their regular scheduled meetings every month. So, for example, they were expected to raise by a half a point. Inflation came a little higher than expected, so they ended up raising by three quarters of a point. Mm -hmm. And what they do is, they'll, they'll telegraph it, and they'll say, we're gonna raise by three quarters of a point, they raise three quarters of a point, interest rates will typically run up until they actually announce that. So the interest rates on mortgages, for example, will go higher. And then when they go higher, they make the announcement, then they fluctuate. Sometimes they settle back down a little bit, but they fluctuate. So right now they may have um, interest rates of say uh, 5.996%, where say before that, they may have been in the high fives, but not quite that high. So, so do you think that uh, based on what you just said about settling down, uh, do, do you think that there'll be some settling in the next week or so? Or And I realize you don't you have a crystal ball, but... Typically what happens is um, they kind of, the market sort of overshoots. So the rates will, you know, on the announcement, they will go higher. Then they'll drop back, say, a little bit, and then they'll fluctuate. So it's never a straight line up. They go up, they fluctuate. The Fed's already said next month they're going to raise by three quarters of a point. So again, next month going into the meeting, they'll announce, say, what's going on with inflation, and the same thing might happen again. They'll go up, they'll, they'll announce, then they'll settle down, then they'll fluctuate. That's typically what happens. So then the next term that everybody is familiar with or hears often is a rate lock. So um, when you get, when we go out and we find a house and we get it under agreement, then the application process starts with, the second part of the application process starts with you. Yes. Right, and then you're trying to lock in a rate. So can you just talk a little bit more about what a rate lock is and and how long it's good for and like what the parameters are of different extended times? Sure. Um, a rate lock is you're locking an amount of money for a specific period of time on a specific property. So usually you lock when you're under contract because you have the property, the amount, and you have a close date. Mm -hmm. um, so in other words, if you're, say, locking 30 days out, you, you wanna lock for either 30 days. If you're further out, your close date is further out, you can lock for 45 days, 60 days, 75 days. It's usually in 15 day increments, so you know, up to 90 days. You wouldn't lock for 90 days if you're closing 30 days out. So it's, it all depends when you're, again, according to your contract, when you're gonna be closing. So does it cost money to uh, move from? I'd say, well, it depends. Um, like if you, the, the longer you lock for, then the higher the rate could be. The difference between say a 30 and a 45 day, the rate may be the same, but there may be a slight cost. The difference between a 30 day and a 90 day, you'd probably see a three eighths difference in rate, somewhere along there. Hmm, okay. So I guess that brings us to the next question. And I don't know, um, because it's never really mattered up until this last probably three months is, can, could you lock in a rate even if you don't have a house? Do you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, usually you lock when you're under contract and you know when the close date is. That's typical. Right. Um, you can, there are, there are lenders that will let you lock without a property. The problem is that could blow up on you. Um, in other words, going back to if you're locking for 30 days, you get one rate. If you're locking for 90 days, you get a significantly worse rate. Well, if the whole idea behind locking without a property is it's going to take you longer to find it, or you think it's going to take you longer to find a property. So let's say you lock for 90 days, you're locked, and then you find a property the next day. Mm -hmm. Well, 
and you're closing in 30 days, you're subject to a worse rate. So it could blow up on you. Where the Fed has pretty much telecasted that, uh, 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 they've telegraphed uh, that in 30 days they're gonna raise, you could probably count on rates staying within a very tight range for the next 30 days. So if somebody's out looking now, they may not want to lock ahead of having the property because they're going to lock for an extended period of time and they just end up, it may not work out for them. You don't really know what it's going to be. Although they have said, that brings to the next point, right? They've said that they're going to do another 0.75. Yes, in, in July. In, in July. Yeah. So this is going to be another one fast. So for, for, for buyers, what do you think? Like what's the strategy or what's the suggestion that you would have to our buyers or, or you know, on how to kind of navigate the situation? Well, I would, personally, I would not recommend locking without a property because again, you're going to be probably subject to a higher rate than you need because there's maybe more stuff hitting the market now, more mm -hmm. properties hitting the market now. So you'll you possibly find a place right away, but again, you're subject to a much higher rate. What I would do instead is if you find, if you're out looking, you know, follow the normal process as far as um, lock when you're under contract based on your close date. But then when you close, if, if you have a house you like and the payment's comfortable, then any time after six months, we can refinance you and lower your rate in your term. So you, you've got the house you want, you've got the payment you want, and what's gonna happen is the Fed has a dual mandate. Where the Fed right now is in a tightening mode, they're gonna raise, keep raising rates until they control inflation. Then when they hit, hit like an equilibrium point, the, part of, the other part of the mandate is they have to stimulate growth. Well, when you got high interest rates, the way you stimulate growth is you start cutting. So when they start cutting, then we refinance you and put you in you know, a lower rate, a lower term, and you save money that way. So I've heard from other clients that have done business with you in the past that your, your team is really good at when something drops, giving, giving the client a call mm. and saying, hey, this probably is a good time for you to refinance, and you walk them through that whole process again. Absolutely. Uh, I don't like to see people pay too much. <laughs> I don't like to see them have too high an interest rate. So if we can help them, then we will. We, we have a, a process in place where we'll call them. We'll check the rates against what they have, and we'll call and we'll follow up. And um, you know, if, if they can't do anything, say in six or eight or nine months, we're still watching a year out. I've had people years later refinance and put them in a much better spot. And sometimes multiple times, right? Oh sure. Yeah. yeah you've had people go from a thirty-year, and then over the course of a couple of years, they may end up in a fifteen-year. You know, like when the rates were dropping into the twos, they may have ended up in a 15 year with a rate of like 2.375 and they've got a comfortable payment and they just chopped off 10 or 15 years worth of payments. So, nice, that's yeah, good. Works out pretty good. So if you want, have more information or you have questions, the couple first things I wanna say is we're gonna do another video. We're probably gonna start doing these once a week, especially because with the rates changing and the market you know, adjusting, I think there's a lot of people with a lot of questions in their mind. So if you go to our website, um, which is paulamartingroup.com, you'll have a place where you can put in a question or you could go to our Facebook, which is probably even better, and post questions. And then we can address those as we're moving through um, these videos. And the other thing is, of course, Rich Berry, Pride Rock Mortgage, uh, Pride Rock Mortgage, Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. www.pridrockmortgage.com. You can also go there. And uh, thanks again. We'll see you soon.